We're back this week with Stephanie Dobson. Stephanie is a lawyer and mediator at Hanka Divorce Law and Mediation here in Lloydminster. Back for another episode of Healthy Thriving Family After Divorce. And Stephanie, continuing our conversation from last week, we're talking about questions that you get or that are sent in by our viewers uh, that really is surrounding the divorce and separation process because it is never easy. So we'll get back into it this week and talking about uh, basically, the a very hard question, I'm sure, to answer, but am I allowed to move away with my kids? Well, as with most questions, I always have to start with, it's complicated, right? It, um, you know, in every family law matter, of course, it's going to depend on the situation. Um, but in, in this particular case, we're dealing with various pieces of legislation um, with answering any of these questions. So um, again, we're referring to legislation on divorce. So the Federal Divorce Act applies to married spouses who are seeking a divorce. And then the provincial legislation applies to unmarried spouses or married spouses not seeking a divorce. So um, if we look at the Federal Divorce Act, and then the Saskatchewan Provincial Act, um, those are very similar. So they have specific wording in that in those legislation about changes of residence and relocation. So I just use sort of two phrases. So change of residence is one and relocation is the other. So change of residence is where you're moving maybe within the city, you're moving maybe a little ways away, but you're not really going to change the parenting plan or the parenting schedule very much. That's the kind of um, move that you don't really need to seek permission to move. You just need to give the other per parent notice that you're moving because um, they won't really affect the other parent and their parenting time as much. Now, the second one is relocation. So relocation is where there's going to be a substantial change to the parenting. So in that case, there's notice requirements, there's forms that need to be used, and it's really important that you do those right because the judges are not very forgiving if you're not giving the right notice. So um, I'll just mention really quickly, um, the provincial legislation in Alberta doesn't actually have those particular relocation clauses in the legislation, but it's the court made law that will define whether a move is going to be allowed. Okay, and the next question, Stephanie, is what rights do I have to actually have time with my kids? So I like to switch this question around and say, instead of as a parent, what right do I have to spend time with my kids? It's what right do my kids have to, what right do my kids have to spend time with me as a parent? So when uh, parents tell me the other parent won't let them have time with the kids, um, it's, it can be very problematic. At the core of it, for most separated parents, neither parent can dictate allowing time with the kids. Now, of course, this is most, most situations and every situation is different, but typically this is something that needs to be negotiated. So I always tell parents that the sooner that you can get in to discuss and agree on the parenting schedule, the better, especially before any tug of war happens. So you remember last week we were talking about when to get in to see a professional, the earlier that you're thinking about separation, the better it um, to get into, to see that professional because that's the schedule of parenting is usually the very first thing that needs to be dealt with because we're, we're going from one home into two. How are we going to make sure that we both um, that we both see the kids? But when I help families to discuss parenting schedules, we need to think of a number of different things like work schedules, kids schedules, holidays. Now, those are all important things. But at the end of the day, just before you separate, it's really important to um, come up with at least a tentative schedule um, to make sure you both uh, see the kids. Okay, and the last question for the week, Stephanie, is how long do I have to be separated uh, before you can actually get a divorce? So there's, um, so we'll, we'll first look at the legislation, and then we'll look at the reality of the situation. So to be eligible for a divorce, so that's the capital D divorce, I am no longer going to be your legal spouse. You need to prove to the court that there's been what's called a breakdown of the relationship, and that's in the legislation. So you can show that in one of three ways. So first is living one year separated and apart. The second is adultery by the other spouse. And the third is mental or physical cruelty. So that goes to the family violence question. But the, the, the idea is that you can always start the divorce action in the courts and get some ten, tentative re, uh, temporary resolution. We were talking before about, you know, do I need to go to court? Well, if you need a parenting schedule, you might need to go to court. So you can do that before you get to the year mark, but you can't actually get the capital D divorce until that one year mark or 
the other two factors have um have have passed now i'll just finish by saying um typically in processes that i use like mediation or collaborative divorce usually issues take somewhere between two to four months to resolve and then the rest of the time the former couple is just sort of letting time pass and waiting for that year of separation to become eligible okay great information as always stephanie thank you so much for joining us this week and we'll talk to you again next week yeah we'll see you next time